Ghana is changing each year memorization method of teaching and learning, also known as Chiwe and Po in schools across the country. On Thursday, September 22nd, Education Minister Dr. Yao Osei Educhum raised these concerns when he was speaking at the Transforming Education Summit at the 77th section of the United Nations General Assembly. And here's what he said. We have good children in Ghana, so respectful. But I go to schools upon schools and I speak with the students. And when I finish speaking with them, I'll say, do you have a question for me? No hand goes up. A hand is just to go up in all my encounters in Ghanaian classrooms. We have tamed the children. We just want them to write down what we tell them. At the day of exams, they should put down what we have told them. We say, you are the best student the country has ever known. That kind of education system will not transform Ghana. That kind of education system is not going to give us critical thinking individuals, especially since we are um, in the 21st century and education 4.0, the fourth industrial revolution. You can memorize your way out of poverty, but you can critically think and innovate out of poverty. So Ghanaian schools, Africans will have to begin to take a serious look at what are called assertive curriculum. A curriculum that empowers the African child to ask questions and challenge the status quo respectfully within the African cultural context. But not a curriculum that tells the African child to be quiet and don't say anything when the adult is speaking. And tell the adult back. Tell him back whatever he was told. That kind of education system, I don't care if we get to the point where every African child is in school. If you put all of them in school and do not change the way you teach them by empowering them to be assertive individuals, you still not transform Africa through education. So as we embark on access, we also have to look at the quality and the relevance of the education system. That will truly put us in a space where education can become the most important socioeconomic transformation agent. Our education system now is not going to be what transforms our continent. And we need to take a serious way. I know about Ghana, I know about other countries. If you are a country in Africa and an exception, then you are good. But I know that invariably, we want to tame the children. The quietest child in the class is deemed as the most respectful. And we have to begin to take a serious look at the curricula, the pedagogy, the strategy that we are using so that Africa will be transformed through education. When we have the critical mass with critical mind to really challenge the status quo so that we can innovate ourselves out of poverty through education. Thank you for the opportunity. These same concerns were highlighted by Dr. Elsie A. Fakofman in a tech talk she gave three years ago on engineering education in Ghana. There are three main public universities producing engineers in Ghana. I'm in Kroma University of Science and Technology. They produce the most engineers. On average, they produce 760 engineers. University of Ghana is a new entrant and produces on average, in that time frame, produce on average 50 graduates. There's also UMAT, Univ uh, University of Mines and Technology, which produce approximately 250 graduates per year during that period. Are these numbers sufficient? I don't know. That is one of the problems. What kind of education did these engineers receive? Were they trained to be able to solve our problems or not? So what are we doing? Nationally, we are known to be a most risk-averse society. We have zero tolerance for failure. If you fail in an endeavor, consider yourself done. And so with this kind of attitude, we look for things that will work. So we have no patience for experimentation. We have no patience for trying things out and then learning along the way so that we can get better. So what happens is, uh, nationally, we are interested in important solutions. And I have seen this for myself. I teach at the Department of Biomedical Engineering, University of Ghana. I have taken my students on field trips to hospitals where we have asked the questions, the medical devices you are using, if we were to produce some in Ghana right now, would you use them? And we've been told point blank, no. How can we know that they work? On the other hand, the ones we import always work for us, and we are okay with those, so that is what we will do. We have curricula that don't encourage exploration and problem solving. 
I was just talking to some of my past students and they told me they had, for example, their course, they had to uh, memorize 40 equations. If you successfully do that, you will get your A and a beautiful certificate. They have been programmed to respond to a reward system that rewards rote learning. They are the expert. We take the best. And the best means these are the people who can memorize the most. We will pick the best students who know how to memorize over a student who actually knows how to do something. So it's not because we cannot be innovators that we cannot design, that we cannot solve real life problems. There is something inherently wrong with the way we are treating our students and the lack of expectations that we have for them. In response to this, the government is laying down new measures, including the construction of the country's first ultra modern science, technology, engineering, and mathematics academy in Accra, which will ensure that students are equipped with the skill and ability to think through and generate innovative ideas that will bear the needed technological development in the country. Some of the newly built STEM schools, like the Wilson Tree Girls STEM School and the Technical and Vocational Education Training School at East Legon, are currently operational, with other schools receiving new computer science laboratories and equipment. The minister also announced that the government is committed to establishing 20 STEM centers and 10 model STEM senior high schools across the country. The need for African schools to adapt a curriculum that empowers the African child cannot be overemphasized, and the effort the minister is taking deserves applause. In these modern times, many approaches to teaching a child how to think has been devised, and it is high time Ghana and Africa as a continent start training students to develop the skill set that fits the needs of our economy. I am excited that Ghana is embracing a new system that aligns with the needs of our economy. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you.